Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Noved Player, and welcome to episode 35 of the Noved Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators inside of the platform. I'm your host, and with me today, I have one of the OGs when it comes to VR chat horror map creation, uh, Official Seon. Seon, welcome to the podcast. Hope you're doing Hell well. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you're, hope you're doing well. Had a little uh, lag spike there. Whoops. Darn VR chat servers. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, how, how's it going? Yeah, good, good. Um, like everyone knew, I was uh, AFK for a long time. But uh, yeah, I was inspired to come back and, you know, try out the new features that were available in VR chat. So far, I've been enjoying it a lot and uh, yeah, made a lot of same content and for uh, that will soon be alive no absolutely and i was gonna say because you you know you've been one of the ogs you correct me if i'm wrong but it was around like um it was like roughly 2017 2018 when you started doing maps correct <laughs> yeah so basically when i fully started i guess would be 2018 january um, and basically how it all started is we had a thing called the Huggy Club, um, which originally was just a model with bunny ears and me going around and just walking up to people and be like, do you want to be my friend? And I had like a voice uh, changer that sounded like a girl. So people were actually believing that it was a girl, but we were all pranking people and, you know, it started like a cold and people are gathering and like oh we gotta follow huggy everywhere she goes and eventually that's when the first map was made which was the huggy club uh mansion and this is where you know we had different rooms and we had different members having their own custom rooms and we role played a little bit and eventually there was one person that said does huggy have a sister and at that moment, I was like, not really, but what if she does and she's super evil and scary? And that's when we started role-playing that there was an evil twin sister that was dressed in red, because, you know, red is normally evil. And after that, people said, does she have a dungeon or a basement? And that's slowly how we shifted into Huggy Dungeon Series Part 1. Mm. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, I guess kind of, you know, before yeah. we get too far in depth with the maps itself, um, you know, I kind of <laughs> wanted to get to know, you know, a little bit more about you yourself. So, you know, realistically, yeah. what got you into like VR chat as a platform in the first place? Like when you first started? Right. So there, my friend uh, actually messaged me. He was like, there's this really cool platform where you can social or you know socialize with each other it can be done in vr but also desktop and you can be anything you want and i was first like eh, i mean there's other games like that should i try it or not and i just was like yeah let's do it i went on and the first map that i spawned in was the second hub not the very first hub but the second hub i think it's called the great hub and yeah people walked around i started talking to people and they were like uh, are you new do you have any avatars i'm like no no this is my first time and they were showing me around and uh that's where i asked someone how do you do this you know how do you make your avatars and they're like well there's many worlds that have avatars that you can just select and then you can also do it with unity i do have a little unity background back then but not as much as i have now but um, yeah, that's how I started playing VR chat. Fair enough. So I guess kind of, you know, to go <laughs> into a little bit, because you started back way back when, you know, what was it like, you know, maybe for those that may, may be newer to VR <laughs> chat, what was it like, you know, back in right. the day, you know, dealing with like the whole Ugandan knuckles craze, the whole, you know, back, <laughs> back in that, back in that day when VR chat realistically was a different you know it was a lot smaller and it was a different time yeah yeah uh well all i remember is that we went to the live mic room place i think it was where you could do karaoke and <laughs> we were singing on the stage and suddenly a whole army of uganda knuckles just <laughs> they all went by and we couldn't <laughs> we couldn't handle it we just kept on laughing and 
Yeah, and the whole different name tags that we used to have with that green overlay, that 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 was the gold times. And then we had the great pug in its early stages, and it, I don't know, it just felt like you went in with a group of friends, or even just to public rooms, and you just meet people, and people just had random fun. It it was great. It still is great, but just different now than compared to back then. Mm hmm. I'll say, yeah, definitely. Definitely a lot has changed when it comes to the social aspect uh, of VR chat. You know, yeah. I'll say, you know, as you, you're more than well aware, you know, there wasn't too many worlds compared to nowadays. You know, now you got worlds for practically, oh, yeah. <laughs> you got worlds for practically everything nowadays, whether it's fandoms or games, <laughs> um, you know, chill hangout spots, all sorts of stuff. Um, it, it's definitely, it definitely has changed to say the least. Um, you know, and kind of to go into, you know, more your side, you know, so you actually, right. you know, you started making worlds, you know, based around the horse, you know, genre and stuff. So I guess I'll ask what <laughs> kind of got you into, you know, creating worlds in the first place? Uh, well, be before VR chat, uh, I already was. Uh, had a very creative mind and i started with a game called rpg maker not sure if you know it but it's basically one of those you know, uh, top down or uh, 2d games and that was like when i was 14 i started creating random projects just for myself not even to share with people and it gotten better over the day but then i was like hmm i want to try 3d platforming so then i got into amnesia for example and they have their own little level editors and, you know, you start doing more horror stuff, you learn more code. Then when I went over to Gary's Mod, they had their own hammer editor. You know, that was, it all came up to the same thing. You start with a blank canvas, you have an idea, you start building it, and you keep on building. And then I started doing it on Unity with VR Chat, and, well, I just literally, with my first map, started with a plain canvas, placed a pool, a few uh, bars and launched it and went in there with friends and we just had hours of fun in one small map so it's great it's absolutely great when you launch your world no absolutely and you know kind of because you're talking <laughs> about you, you know the first world so one of the questions i wanted to ask so how long did yeah. it take you to make that first world you know starting from where you started like in the very early beginnings you know if you have like a rough estimate how right. long did it take to make that first world um i guess for the huggy Dun or the huggy mansion it was in in phases but i guess when it was completely done was probably like three months yeah the hardest thing was the the triggers itself, you know, like uh, they had prevaps like chairs, but you had to like do the on triggers and, and all of that to make stuff work. And I was, you know, figuring it all out. So it was a lot of testing. But yeah, three months to complete that one, at least. I gotcha. I was say because as somebody who has like <laughs> no Unity Blender or any of that experience, <laughs> it would take me yeah, 10 times that long, if not longer. Um, so uh, yeah, I would say. <laughs> so what got you into you know? Because with VR Chat Worlds, you know, most people use you know Unity. Mm -hmm. A lot of people use Blender. Yeah. Um. So what got you into like creating using like Unity and Blender or any other programs you may have used? Ah, okay. So I have used Maya before, which is also a three D modeling software. Um, um, but ever since I gotten into VR chat, you know, people recommended Blender, Blender, and use cats for avatar models and optimize them. So that's where I started using those plugins. Yeah, ever since I have been using it, even in projects outside of VR chat. So it's it's very good software. Yeah. Mm. Now you know because you said you use the the other one. You know, was it kind of easy to kind of right. go to Blender? you know, like in transition or did it kind of play like hand in hand? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's very similar in its own, in own way. I guess what makes Blender so nice is that you can uh, implement your own scripts and, and even have some um, compatibility with the softwares that I've used before, which is great. 
um, because you know you have uh, Maya files, for example, but there are ways to convert them to Blender. So, yeah, I mean it. It works great. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and you know, kind of, <laughs> let's go. You know, more further in. You know, because there's there's a lot. You know, yeah. there's a lot of different worlds and stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so kind of what made you think of the storyline like originally for you know the huggy dungeon series and all the other you know maps there's gonna be a lot of lore right. Ho hope you're ready comment oh, section it's gonna man. be a lot of lore yeah well <laughs> so uh a lot of people well the real legends know this but the the whole bunny story is because i have bunnies in real life <laughs> so I decided to just put bunny ears on the characters and be like, hey, I have bunnies. I want to implement it on the characters of Huggy Dungeons. And I don't know. I just started thinking like, OK, so there's two little sisters. It needs a big brother. And, you know, that's where Alex came out. At first, he had a completely different design, but uh, I decided to just do a makeover until I was very satisfied with it. I showed it to other people. And and they, they loved it. And um, the entire lore of it, I guess, starts in the manor. You know, there, there used to be a stairs and a secret door. And if you enter that, you go into the basement where part one starts. And truthfully, part one was just a test. It, it wasn't even supposed to be anything related to lore. Um, but it was just a test to see how can I make a horror map public make it public and show it to people that's how it all started <laughs> no i gotcha yeah no because it's yeah it's kind of the one you know that kind of kicked it all off you know in the in that regard and yeah <laughs> you know i was gonna say because you know with how many maps you have made you know one of the questions i wanted to ask you know kind of from where you are now you know, looking back, mm -hmm. you know, did you ever think that the maps were going to be as popular as they were? Oh, man. No, honestly, no, because uh, that map was supposed to be a test for just that huggy club uh, that I had just for those users so that we could play around there and role play. But then, you know, people said, oh, you should make it public and you should invite random people and see what they think and that's what we started doing the the first couple of weeks and people said whoa this is actually really cool this is nice um i'll i'll ask other friends to do this with me and that's how it kind of started growing and at first i was like oh wow cool yeah this is actually cool and you know as time went by people were like you need to make a part two you need to make another map with this story <laughs> but continuing and I was overwhelmed because, you know, I was trying to add more stuff to part one. Um, that wasn't even needed, but, you know, I was just, I want to make it better for people. I want to um, make it so that when they come back, they're like, whoa, so much has changed. And um, it has improved a lot because when I go back to part one, even now, and I play it in VR or desktop, I'm like, oh, my God, this is bad. <laughs> Things can be so much better, <laughs> you know, but that's, I leave it that way because that's how it started you know i don't want to make it better and leave that nostalgia feeling behind i want to leave it the way it is all also with all the other maps that i've done um if they are released that way i want to leave it that way because that's what people are used to back then but also now and even for new players they can also see how i progressed from you know level one for example to level five you know the quality difference mm. No, I gotcha. I was going to say, that kind of stems into <laughs> one of the other questions I had, um, because there are a lot of world creators out there who will take, like, one of their oldest work or the oldest work and, like, remaster it right. to kind of give it that extra shine, you know? And I, I totally oh, yeah. I understand giving mm -hmm. the nostalgia feeling, you know, having that as its template, you know? So have you ever right. thought of, like, remastering, like, any of the worlds in particular, like, just to kind of show the improvement from <laughs> when you started to now? This is a very good question, and, and, and a lot of people have been asking then, and uh, there was a point where I was like, maybe I should do a part one remastered version or revisit it or something where everything's like rotten and broken and, you know, a whole different theme. And then I was like, let's save it for HDS part four, um, because I have some really good ideas for that game where the players have to go back to certain parts of the map and then they will see 
feel that they're back in part one, but also be like, this is not part one, if that makes sense. <laughs> so like, it's a whole kind of a kind of, of kind of a um, sneak yeah. nostalgia trip with a twist, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I get yeah. that. That's cool. No, I mean, that's, I know, I know a lot of people, <laughs> you know, who are, you know, fans of your maps and stuff. And um, I think they'll be, I think they'll really enjoy that, to say the least. They might get tripped yes. up because it, you know, because of the little subtle, you know, here and there. Oh, wait, this is not it. But I mean, that's still pretty cool. Right. You know, nonetheless. <laughs> um, you know, so I guess kind of to, you know, progress in the timeline a little bit. You know, so you had made mm -hmm. some some of the uh, Huggy Dungeon series, and you know, you also made um, you know some uh, Halloween. I believe it was Halloween and Christmas. I believe were the two holidays that I remember. Yes. So you know, what kind of yeah. what kind of what kind of stemmed those out? <laughs> um, well, I think that was during the time of part one and two. Part two was just finished, and I wanted to start a part three, but then someone pointed out. I think it was during Christmas. Actually, they were like, "You should make." seasonal and and you know like special teamed maps and I, at first i was like i could but then i don't know how that would link to the lore but then someone kept saying just try it and see how uh, you know grows and i started working on halloween because that was the first one um and yeah i just had a little spawn area uh voice actors and and then you know the rules that everyone has to listen to and then someone was like, "You should build a, you know, a ride, a roller coaster ride." And I was like, "How am I gonna do that?" But uh, yeah, it turned out. And from there, I was like, "What do you normally have at a Halloween event?" And I was like, "Well, you have a stage, you have, uh, you know, candy, you have music, but you also have scare zones, you know." And that's when I was like, "Okay, this could actually work." And then it was actually quite a success. And then I was like, "Let's do Christmas as well." And there were a lot of requests for uh, an Easter map, but I was like, yeah, it was iffy for me because then it would make sense with the bunnies and finding all the eggs. But I think that's more like a one type of event, you know, not like an actual map itself. Mm, no, I gotcha. I would say, you know, because, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it, a lot of holidays are going to be hit or miss, you know, mainly because of like regional stuff and yeah. beliefs and whatever, right. yada, yada, yada. We're not getting into the politics, but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, it's definitely understandable to say at least, um, you know, and, and that's cool that you delve into that territory a little bit because it can you know, it can bring some new people into whatever you're doing. You know, um, I know a lot of people yeah. during the holidays, they'll love to look up like, I mean, as this episode's airing, you know, it'll be right around Halloween time. HorrorCon <laughs> will be going live as this, you know, episode's being aired. Yeah. Um, but I would say, you know, people look for like the horror maps or the scary maps, um, you know, and with the holidays, whether it be Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, whatever it may be, you know, people will look for those types of maps. And they'll see exactly. like the the holiday horror, and they'll be like, "Oh, this is cool. I wonder what other creations that this person's made." You know, so it's all it's all about learning yeah. what you can do, and then at least this is my opinion: doing what you do, and then you know, evolving it by including things that people enjoy, because people people can you know enjoy literally whatever as long as it's you know well taken care of, and you know it's not illegal. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Um, <laughs> but, um, you comment section, I, I see you, um, but, um, me and the comment section have a love hate relationship. Um, fun fact. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it, it's, it's definitely cool to, that you kind of branched out into that aspect and, you know, kind of speaking of branching out, cause you, while you do have like the Huggy Dungeon series, you also do have, um, right. some other related horror maps as well. Um, like I, if I remember correctly, and yes. feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you did the, the FNAF, uh, help wanted. You also did like the slender, um, like <laughs> one of the slender ones as well, you know? So what kind of mm -hmm. got you, what kind of got you into doing like those types of maps as well? I, I think one of the very first, was it the, um, Emily wants to play fear chat? Uh, yeah, I, I believe saw so. that on YouTube once, and I was like, "Wow, it would be really cool if there's a remake on this on your chat." And you know, I started doing that. It was a very complex thing to set up, um, which is a lot easier now with you know 3.0. 
but back then it was it was so hard because you had only a lim limited time things of options that you could implement. But um, yeah, after that one, I did the FNAF one. That was the probably the most complex one, and is still quite broken <laughs> nowadays. But um, that one uh, was very fun to do. And yeah, it, a lot of people were just like, "You should remake that game. You should remake that game." There were so many requests, and I was like, "It would be so cool." But you know, I it, it takes a lot of time to do that because it's not just implementing assets and and just placing it. You know, you gotta also think like a player. Like, they spawn in, what do they see? What do they expect? Uh, how many players does it need? You know, like, you gotta think as a player, but not just that, you could also think as a cheater, because, you know, that happens in maps. But you have to think, like, they spawn in, they want to fly around, so, you know, put a coll collision or something, some barrier thing to make sure it's not possible. And, yeah, it, it, it's very hard as a creator to just uh, make a map and make it functional for everyone, because there's VR players, there's desktop players, there's West players, there's even, you know, Android players nowadays. Like, it goes all the way. <laughs> Not to mention there's iOS players now, too, which is still, exactly. a, which yeah. is still a wild, <laughs> wild thing to, to think about. I, <laughs> I like fun, fun, yeah. fun, small tangent. Like, I was redoing my avatars and stuff um, for, you know, the anniversary mm -hmm. event, uh, which is now passed. Uh, after this episode's aired but um right <laughs> and you know i was working with something and it just it was like yeah generate imposters like on the website and i'm like okay yeah cool and then it said ios confirmed and i'm like oh right <laughs> you exist now i don't know if i like that yeah. yet like you know we got mobile players now android ios you know meta quest <laughs> standalone you know and pc players it's like that's absolutely yes. crazy how far this platform has become. I'm still waiting. Uh, and this, it is. <laughs> this, is, this is a throwback to another episode. Um, but I'm still waiting for the day that um, they you can put it like on like your phone, but like put it in like one of those like cheap like <laughs> cardboard like you know like kind of like Nintendo Labo. Oh gosh! <laughs> but but like but not like the Nintendo one, yeah. but like just like the regular like cardboard thing. I'm still waiting for that to become a thing. Just like connect an Xbox controller or something <laughs> to your phone and just because you can play on Xbox controller if you didn't know that, you know, or any you know yep. controller. <laughs> yep. So just have a controller and then just you know do it that way. That'd still be it'd be crazy for it to see that um at It'll least awesome. <laughs> at least in my opinion it probably would run very poorly but you know oh yes <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so you know and i know you know when it comes to back back to you um sorry sorry for the weird tangent but it's uh it's definitely one of those <laughs> it's definitely one of those things you know because as you've kind of been you know progressing along um, you know, I already kind of, you know, briefly mentioned it, um, but you also have worked, uh, with Mr. Creepypasta and Horicon, uh, and you made a few maps, uh, for, <laughs> for them as well. Um, you know, so I guess yes. first and foremost, like, you know, what was your experience, you know, uh, working like with Horicon and Mr. Creepypasta? <laughs> Well, it was definitely a hype train for me because I watched his videos even way before VR chat and, and when I was super young. And, you know, I, I was like, Horicon? Ah, huh, that's cool. I can, you know, feature my maps there. And then it was Creepypasta himself that contacted me out of nowhere. And I was like, wait, wait a second. Is, is this him? You know, because it could have been everyone, but it was actually him. And he said, uh, a lot of people told me that you make a lot of horror maps and I want you to be at Horicon. And that was the very first one with the, the ball pit. Um, and yeah, it, it, from there on, we started chatting and, and I requested his voice for my projects. And is down for it even for the the new map that I'm w working on. He uh, He wants to voice for that as well. So that's really awesome. But um, yeah, and then the second year came and then he was like, uh, we need um, a scare zone. That's how it first started. And I was like, OK, yeah, I mean, what do you have already? And he explained it to me. Then I asked him for the story, like, what's the story behind it? And he just said, this is the budget that I'll give you. This is the deadline. And I want you to just start and just start making your own thing and then just 
just keep me up posted. I know I will like your stuff. Just do your own thing and surprise me. And that's how the first map, I think it was the, uh, I kind of forgot the name, the, the alien one. Yeah, the site, the I think is what it was called. Yes, the site. Yes, yes. Uh, I, re <clears throat> I really like that one. That one actually came out, yeah, pretty good. And to, to what he expected, um, yeah, he loved that one fully. So, and the second one that he requested, the one with the go uh, what was it, the worst of fear. Um, um, I like that one too. The minor de the problem is is that um, the performance was a bit off, and a lot of things bugged out. And it mainly was because the deadline was a lot, lot shorter than I had for the site. So, you know, it was kind of very stressful, and I had to make sure it was finished before uh, Huracan started. So, but I would say within that little time that I had, it, it still turned out pretty good. Yeah, I would say definitely both are highly enjoyable. Um, I do prefer the site. Yeah. Which, the, the, the site for me was <laughs> yeah, yeah. one of the better <laughs> ones. Um, but I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so after having, you know, so many maps under your belt now, um, you know, right. You are also working, you know, on a newer map. Um, and <laughs> you know, yes. uh, first of all, I don't, I don't know how much you want to talk about it. Cause I don't know when the release date is or anything like that. <laughs> um, but right. you know, I guess, you know, if, if you want to talk about it, you know, what exactly, if you can tease anything, what is <sighs> kind of, you know, yeah. the, the newer map that you're, you know, creating. So the name is already available. You can see it on my social media. Uh, it's called Mind of Official Seon. And then the first thing that, you know, that you would ask is like, oh boy, we're going to enter his mind. This is going to be a complete mess, right? <laughs> so like, that's literally, literally what's going to happen. You um, start in VRChat and you find your way somehow. I guess you could call it the back rooms, if that makes sense. And then somehow you found a secret entrance that leads to a certain area that gains access to my brain. And you legit just go through my life. Um, so from childhood all the way to where I'm now, there are a few things sped up and you know, a little bit changed and altered to make it scary because, you know, you don't just want to see a kid running around and then playing with gifts and and then that's it no it has to have a, a full story there's a lot of uh true lore in there that happened in my life a lot of uh, um heavy things but also fun things scary things and nightmares that i had and all that there's a lot of different faces that the players will go through i think this map will definitely be the most uh uh, emotional uh, emotion roller coaster that everyone has ever experienced in one of my maps. Um, there's also five warnings uh, systems that people have to click in order to continue. Like they have to uh, normally you have the one button that says I understand or you know continue, but this one has five because it's so uh, it goes very deep and it's very dark at some parts. So I want to make sure that people are ready for that and they read it because. It a whole nother level but uh, i can show you a few screenshots if you want and tell you a little bit about it sure um so we have the this section which uh doesn't say too much but it uh it says rusty uh wonders corp which is a toy factory abandoned um and basically as a player in in way deeper into the map you get to explore this place and you get to see all the worn out toys and you know the the that are broken and the mascot that you see that little bunny he is the one that repairs those toys so there's a lot of um poppy playtimes vibes in there and a little bit of five nights at freddy uh, which is really really fun that's actually the part i'm working right now on mm. um and then we have this section. It just says ex exhibit. Oh man, exhibitation. I don't know how to say it, but exhibition. <laughs> exhibition. It feels like <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> it's uh, it's a museum that you go through, and yeah, it says on the underneath it says OS thoughts, which is official say on thoughts, and you get to go through different thoughts that I have. So happy thoughts, angry thoughts, uh, scary thoughts, and people will see how i think um they will feel 
feel uh, what I feel when I go through those emotions. That's why I said it's going to be a roller coaster of emotions. Um, but you also get to learn there about me, like what I did before VRChat and stuff. So pretty much this interview in that map, <laughs> pretty much. Um, Fair enough. Uh, this one is uh, quite graphic, but uh, <laughs> this is where you go into the more, you know, the darker thoughts and stuff. So you get to see some of the the scary things and, and and the monsters that were made there. It's it's um it's very cool, but you have to have the right mindset before you go in there. That's why there is many warnings. Mm. Um, and then the last screenshot, the right to the heart, and this is where players legit will be in a ride as they travel through my heart or to my heart and they will learn more about how i started with vr chat and and how my experience was uh to where i am now really cool no that's awesome <laughs> bro that, i mean that, you're you're you are the first guest that's actually had a proper slideshow presented on their <laughs> avatar so kudos well done then yeah that's cool um I'm going to hope that all the cameras there is, got it. However, one more thing. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's one more thing I want to show you, and that's giving you a slight introduction to a few characters that will be in there. Yeah, um, sure. Which is the first one, which will introduce himself, which is called the Doctor. Oh, here we go. Ah, well, finally. I am known as the Doctor. I play a crucial role in Seon's new map, Mind of Official Seon. You see, we conduct tests, exploring the boundaries of fear and the fragility of the human mind. I find it fascinating what the mind will do when it's cornered, pushed to its limits. But don't worry, you're here for a reason. You might just be the perfect candidate. It is very nice to meet you, Novid player. I will see you soon in my lab. That's, so that's nuts. That was nuts. What the fuck? <laughs> that was nuts. <laughs> that was absolutely crazy, yeah. bro. That's cool. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Bro, I said yeah, my name and everything. I figured bro. you would like that. <laughs> I do. That's that's yeah. legit. No, that was cool. Scared the shit out of me. I mean, like, I was, I was, I was. It looked great from what I could see on the camera. That looked really cool. That was sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! No, that was really cool. The doctor. But, yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's the doctor. He's gonna be featured also way later into the map. He's gonna be, like he said, he's very. Uh, enthusiast on on learning how the brain works for people so he's gonna test people and see how much they can handle he's looking for that perfect specimen that can handle every single fear um which i can tell you right now is that during that section you will be tested so you will see a result screen of how many times you got jump scared or how brave you were so that's gonna be uh, really interesting um then we also have a second character which is from the map wdps um which uh yeah she will introduce herself so here we go Whoa. oh dearie <laughs> welcome i'm mrs filcher but you can call me whatever you like i've been here a long time keeping things tidy making sure the guests stay where they belong a lot of you will remember me from wdks horror map i wasn't always like this you know once i took care of people try to help them but sometimes you find something something darker and it changes you but enough about that let me not hold you up i am sure you guys have a lot more to talk about just remember in my house we play by my rules dude there that's, go. <laughs> that, that's crazy bro. bro i'm not gonna get over this bit this bit alone i'm not gonna get over for at least a month that's crazy no the, first of all that's awesome whoa what are you doing here this is wild what are you doing here i was here to remind these guys of something what are you doing yeah what are you gonna remind them about lion i wanted to remind them about something too <laughs> By the way, if you did you have fun at PJKT or VCAT this year? Is there another convention that you're looking for, but it's kind of not the season? 
Well, there's one co- coming up for Halloween that would be definitely down your alley if you're into spooky, scary stuff as well, which is HorrorCon, which is October 26th and 27th this year. So you should definitely go. You see booze, people make stuff here in VR. Lots of crazy stuff for you to go check out. There's also going to be DJs as well as many different worlds and events from panels to amazing things along the way. You'll have to check it out. It is a two-day event. Like Lion said, October 26th and 27th. Make sure to be there. Go down in the description, discord.gg slash pjkt, and also HorrorCon's Discord will also be down there as well. Go check it out. It'll be amazing time. You'll probably see us there. There's a lot of amazing people from horror creators to world creators of the horror genre, all sorts of stuff. You don't want to miss it. Not at all. Go down the description. Everything you need to know to find out where to go to attend is right down below in the hoobly what's the thingy down there. So sorry to interrupt your current viewing pleasure. Hopefully enjoy the rest of whoever the guest is at this moment. I don't know who it is. There's a lot. There's going to be a lot. <laughs> we'll see you at HorrorCon. Woo! See you at HorrorCon. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, WDKS. <laughs> um, gosh, we, re- we really didn't touch that much on that one. I was going to say, yeah, that, that, was a, no. that, that, that was a good one as well that you, I remember you, um, mm-hmm. that you friendly reminded me scarily that you made. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um that's cool though so realistically i guess you're gonna have a lot of characters in that aspect you know from previous stuff too i would assume correct oh yes i mean you gotta think it like this it's a journey through my entire mind from from start to finish or at least where i am now so that means that old maps may or may not be there in as well i know a big request was unshattered destination i can tell you right now that that one is gonna be in there (laughs) Um, and, you know, WDKS, obviously, um, HDS is going to be featured in, and I'm not supposed to say that, but you're allowed to share that with people. Fine. People know me that I always put an HDS Easter egg or secret in any of my maps, so it wouldn't be a surprise if I do that to this one as well. But there's going to be a lot and a lot of characters that people remember, but also new characters. Um, so yeah, that's a very fun to look forward to. No, absolutely. I like I'm I'm dummy hyped. Like I just bro, I, I'm not going to get over I'm not going to get over this bit that you did. Like that I hope you realize you, you set a new standard for the episodes now and that terrifies me. I'm I'm glad. That's that was sick. That's that's probably the most unique thing I've had like in an episode so far. So that's cool. But um don't <laughs> expect yeah. don't expect that a lot. I'm uh, yeah, don't expect that a lot, chat. You know, comment section, whatever <laughs> platform you're on. Um uh, man, the audio the audio listeners will hear it, but they're not gonna they're not gonna see the, all the effects that happened. That ah uh, dude. Go watch the YouTube or Spotify <laughs> <okay>. version. <laughs> Go watch the YouTube or Spotify version if you're curious as what happened on the screen. Um <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, with all that in mind, right, because, you know, right. going going through your mind and the timeline, you know, from your life, is mm-hmm. there, I guess one of the questions I want to ask, is there anything right. like when it comes to, uh, what's the, what's the phrasing here? You know, is there a section right. that like, could be like the potential future you know, of stay on. Is there like a, cause you'll have, you'll have the past and semi of the present, but does it kind of right. go further in depth into like the future? <laughs> Good question. Let me, let me put it this way. There is going to be four endings. Um, if you, obviously I have a feeling that everyone on their first run is going to get the bad ending because that's the one that's set in stone uh, for when you play it first. Um, but there's also going to be secret ending. There's going to be, a secret two ending and there's gonna be a good ending oh and i forgot uh, a funny ending but basically in the good ending it will show or tell you what's gonna happen after this map and it's good stuff it's good stuff (laughs) i can tell you that fair enough i guess uh i guess to kind (laughs) of ask you know how difficult will it be if you know yet but how difficult will it be to get that good ending (laughs) <laughs> um i guess from from people who've played the map or get a good ending it's quite a lot of 
decrypting secrets and, and, and finding hidden things behind doors and stuff. I guess the best thing for players to do is pay attention to areas and don't just go through them quick. Check everything out. Try to learn about the journey that you're, you're going through and see if you can alter it. That's the only thing. Fair enough. Um, I, I guess kind of yeah. one, <laughs> one of the questions I did want to ask, um, because uh, mm -hmm. As yeah. we were as we were recording this episode, they actually had just right. put out the uh, the persistence beta um, for VR oh, chat. Yeah. So I was I was curious, mm -hmm. you know, um, do you think eventually, maybe down the line, with maybe some of the newer stuff, maybe not some of the older stuff, but maybe some of the newer stuff, right. um, do you think that the persistence beta will benefit you and like your you know creations? 100% because right now for this new map, I have to do a checkpoint system like I did with Unshattered Destination because that's definitely going to be uh, have to be a thing because this map by itself has a prologue of almost two hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Oh, oh um, I... <laughs> it's one of those maps. Got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So and, multiple and, streams. You know, Got it. it. <laughs> Yeah, and it's funny because uh, I had some people tested, and and they were they just finished the prologue, and then one of the announcers is like, "This was only the prologue. Now you're about to start the game," and and they were like, "What? <laughs> no way!" <laughs> and 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 yeah, I, that's when they asked the very first thing they asked is, "We need a checkpoint because there's no way people." will want to do this over and over again. I mean, there are some people that do because they want to find secrets, but some people just want to skip to the, you know, certain parts, which is understandable because they need breaks. They have to sleep or whatever. But the persistence, I cannot wait for that because that means that, you know, there will be safe states of where you are. The triggers will be saved. It's just going to be a lot easier for me because then I don't have to really focus on checkpoints. Fair. No, I'll say it's definitely because there's a lot of games that kind of fall into that category, too. Um, yeah. You know, and granted, I don't know how many of the creators are going to use them um, because some some right. some like, you know, popular game worlds, you kind of don't mm -hmm. need it, per se, like some that like, you know, like Prison right. Escape or Murder, stuff like those. But like ones that take a right. long time um you know like terrors of nowhere for one like they have their own like save way they do their saves and stuff right um you know but like maps like um oh my gosh what's the one map it, it's it's failing me post editor throw it on the screen you know what i'm talking about um but it's the one that takes like six <laughs> it's the one that takes like i believe six hours to complete um it's it oh, was wow. <laughs> huge it was huge for the longest time bro if you're the world creator of that world and it's up on the screen i'm so sorry i know the world it's just my brain is failing me i have a whole seven hour event to do after this devouring? <laughs> yes devouring thank you thank you yes devouring <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh thank you i would have gotten railed in the comment section for that one but yeah no like but ones like devouring <laughs> or you know ones like that that take a long time you know it's yeah. definitely, definitely a lot more useful and, you know, safe because realistically, 99% exactly. of us VR chat players have our headsets on for, you know, seven, eight hours a day. That's not oh, healthy. For the, that's not healthy for the yeah. eyes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about all of you watching, you know, this on in VR. And, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bad, I'm a bad example too, because I do it all the time, but you know, not the point. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, no, I'm very excited to see, you know, as well as, you know, anybody watching this, um, you know, I guarantee people are definitely excited to see what the mind of official say on is and like how it'll run <laughs> Two hour prologue is nuts to say the least. Like I'm yeah. <laughs> that's, Oh my gosh. I, it, it makes my mind wonder how long the actual game or actual maps going to be. If that's the prologue. Oh boy. Yes. It's uh I haven't measured it yet because or it's, um you know there's I am still working on it, but I I have tested uh the first bit with the prologue and then a little bit afterwards, but then we ran into issues and we had to restart. But it's I I would say if if you run it slowly and really listen to every dialogue, etc., 
maybe also six, seven hours because it also has a boss fight at the end, and it's not gonna be as 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 chaotic as part three was with all the bosses because you know a lot of people gave feedback that that was very hard and it felt like Dark Souls. <laughs> but um, sounds like skill issue. I, I've no, learned from that, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, some people are very good at it, and some some are very very uh, running into issues, which I understand. But yeah, I've learned from it and there will only be maybe yeah one boss two faces that's it you know i don't because they already had to go through a six seven hour journey and then also having to fight a boss you know <laughs> they just want to end it at that point and you know that's why i only chose to do one section like that fair enough no i mean that's that's still cool regardless <laughs> that you got a whole boss fight at the end of a potentially you know <laughs> six seven hour map that's 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 yeah. a lot. So I guess one of the questions, because uh, we are we are slowly running a little bit out of time. God, it, it this did not feel as long as it has. Um, but, I know. <laughs> but I guess kind of like kind of to ask um, if you had to take a guess, because right. um, I don't know if you've like tested mm -hmm. it in VR chat or if it's just been like Unity testing and all ah. that. Um, but yeah. out of curiosity, how big is this world going to be if it's going to be that long? <laughs> Okay, so don't shock, but before optimization, it was like at least seven gigs. Right? <laughs> I okay. optimized it all the way to 503 MB. Um, I just, I might be able to get it to 440, but that's the lowest I possibly can get it. But I think that's a fair file size. Fair. Good luck, my fellow laptop players. Yeah. Um anyway, yeah. um <laughs> um no, but I mean that's for as long as you were saying like how long the map would take and whatnot. That's that's right. That's not bad considering, right? Like that's right. <laughs> 4 4 or 500 gigabytes for something like that is pretty much well worth it, you know. Might yeah. be a lot of desktop players over VR players, but I mean, you know, eh, you'll take the good with the bad. It um, works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's cool, man. No, I'm I'm very excited. Um, you know, so I guess you know, kind of to you know wrap things up a bit. You know, so with how I guess right. one of the questions I wanted to ask you as a world creator and a horror experience creator, um, you know, because there's yeah. a lot of people who enjoy the horror genre and stuff. So one of the questions I wanted to ask was, you know, for those that are maybe like, you know, kind of inspired to create said horror experiences, you know, like a lot of what right. you, maybe like what you do or maybe other horror genre stuff, you know, what is one piece of advice that mm -hmm. you can give, you know, for somebody who's maybe looking towards making like a horror experience? Oh man, that's a very good question because then I look at how I started, I, I guess, Find stuff that inspire you. Uh, may it be a movie, a book, even or ebook, or even a map on VR Chat, and, and look at what really stands out for you. Like, if if there's a certain story or a certain monster or certain AI or whatever, if, if that inspires you, write that down because that's what I do. I write it down. And I start combining it into my own thing. I'm like, how can I implement this in my own way? And if you are starting completely from, you know, blank canvas and it's your first map, don't expect too much from yourself. Like, don't think that it's it's, it's going to be, you know, the best thing. Just start with something small, even if it's just a house. Start with the house, make, fill it up with furniture, whatever you you like. And start from there. Start adding sounds. Start adding ambience, wind, or whatever. Then test it again. And then, as you walk around, what is the story of this? like? Who are you? Uh, why are you there? Uh, what should happen next? You know, like that's how that's how I normally do it. You know, even with Mind of Seon, I wasn't, I wasn't really focused on anything. I was just like, it's a mess in my head. I have to just spawn something, and I start from there. That's legit how it starts always for every single map that I do. Interesting. No, I mean, that's some wise words in that regard, you know, because, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it only takes one thing realistically 
to inspire yeah. millions and millions of work hours into like a giant passion exactly. project. Um, so I could, I could definitely relate to that. Um, and I guarantee some people out there as yeah. well, <laughs> I guess, you know, kind of, you know, first of all, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I know it's like probably, probably like 10 o'clock at night for you you know it's and, <laughs> um it's all good <laughs> but you know thank you thank you so much for coming on this is a blast kind of to get you know you a little bit more from you know your point of view and like how you know some of these maps came to fruition and stuff dude i'm still kind of g- gassed over yeah. the fucking like the fucking little entities you got in here that's that's gonna be on the mind for a while um yeah <laughs> if you want i i still have one more thing that i can show you that i haven't showed you yet that's all uh, up to you uh sure yeah go for it <laughs> yeah so when we were talking about that mascot that the bunny for that toy factory he has his own little theme song don't worry it's it's uh, non-copyrighted um so it will be fine so this <laughs> is this little theme song that will play as the players first uh, come encounter him That's terrifying. It is time for my musical theme song. Come sing along. In the factory all day, where the toys come out to play. That's right. There's a guard who hops around. That's me. Keeps the joy all safe and sound. In his suit, he's looking bright. Mr. Hobson's our delight. Fixing toys that go astray. Makes them ready for the day. What's my name? Hop, 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 Mr. Hop. Yes, that's me. Making sure the fun Guarding toys with all his might. My might. Every day and every night. All the time. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. I, bro. First of all, that was terrifying to look at. Like, I, I did not. Yeah. It just came out of nowhere. I was expecting like a, like a, like a black screen fade or something. It was like boom. And I'm like, oh, right, geez, right, hi. Right. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. No, nah, man, that's that's cool though. Um, very interesting. That it's got like its own like catchy theme song and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, yes. de- I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited to see what, uh, like what all you got planned when it comes to, like specific parts of the, like the map and the prologue and stuff. Cause I mean, if you, Hell yeah. you know, not a lot of people go into that far, right. You know, um, when it comes to like a lot of detail stuff, you know, they'll just usually put right. like the entity there. It'll just be standing there and, you know, it'll play a song. Uh, yeah. and, th- and that goes with like not just VR chat games, but like indie games, right? Um, you indie know. games too, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of cool that you, you know, you started with like, uh, what was it, RPG Maker, I believe you said? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and now you're like, you know, making VR chat maps and, you know, um, other amazing stuff. Um, now I know yeah. you have. Um, just kind of wrap it up. I know you do have uh, one map in particular yeah. called the Scare Zone. Um, which kind of has like yes. the collection of all of them. Um, but is there like a good way to, um, besides like VR chat, like, do you have like a list of like links right. somewhere for like all the worlds or stuff? Um, I guess that would be the map, the, the, what was it called? The main hub, the official say on hub. Mm -hmm. world that has all the worlds in it uh with different categories that people can enter um it even shows maps that were unreleased and you know never uh were continued well yeah man i was gonna say we are we are running a little bit out of time but once again i do want to thank you for (laughs) this is this is a very grand experience for the podcast i i I definitely enjoyed it um i was not expecting a whole load of like talking avatars with effects and stuff that was cool um good good job you 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 surprised me you you said you were gonna surprise me and you very much well did so thank you Um, yeah yeah of course (laughs) all right all right okay i all right I'm 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 glad that like I I I thought because I remember you saying a jump scare was coming and I was like man I, that was okay <laughs> I, I I jumped a little bit yeah. I, I'll admit yeah we'll throw a jump scare yeah. warning in the beginning um, yeah yeah you need to <laughs> yeah but fair enough the fact that it went like 
perfectly in the camera too was kind of nuts um because i was looking at the camera <laughs> and that's how i was like oh okay yeah um but yeah no i guess you know before we end it off officially <laughs> i do want to give you a chance right you asshole no i, I do want to give you a chance to to tell everyone where they can find you where you know people can follow you uh right. all that stuff but yeah the floor is yours take it away all right yeah thank you for watching this this is a really great uh Novit player did an amazing job and uh, <laughs> if you're interested in more of my content um you can find it on uh huggy dungeon series on well, X, I guess, uh, which was Twitter. Um, my Patreon, which is Patreon official Seon. Um, yeah, and if you want to stay up to date, we also have a VR chat group, uh, which is Huggy Dungeon Series. There's also one uh, for Patreon members, but obviously you have to be a patron for that, uh, which gain quick access to pre released maps and they get to have their own voice in the map, etc. So yeah, if you ever want to stay up to date or you know be featured in the map, find me either on Patreon, uh, Discord, or on social media and the VR chat itself, of course. Of course. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, for those that are interested in the actual group, uh, it is HDS dot seven five zero three we'll throw all these links up on oh, the screen yeah. down in the description <laughs> yeah. um it's okay 90 percent of the people forget that the group uh codes exist it's okay it's natural um i forget mine sometimes <laughs> but um but yeah thank you again for coming on this was an absolute blast um but yeah, yeah thank you of course um but with that ladies gentlemen Everybody inside and outside the ballpark. This has been episode 35 of the Nova Notes podcast. I do want to thank you all so much for watching. Um, and of course, if you liked uh, listening to us talk about, you know, Seon's maps and all of his creations, make sure to go check out his stuff as well. Um, and of course, you know, maybe like the video. Comment down below which one's your favorite map. You know, which which one of Seon's maps is your favorite? You know, Sam might be down in the comments, you know, checking out the comments, seeing what's up and, you know, maybe check some things out. You never know. But with that, I do want to thank you all so much for watching. Uh, and if you are coming to watch some of the other episodes, why not hit that subscribe button? You're already coming back anyway. But with that, once again, want to thank you all so much for watching. Sayon, thank you so much for coming on once again. Um, and yeah. Thank you. <laughs> of course. And I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace. See ya. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Nobis Club.